everybody to another Floyd Pro X quick tip. I am Formal, and today I'm going to be talking about the core trigger and how to use it not only for its purpose, which is just playing chords by touching one key on your keyboard, which is pretty neat, but also to improve your workflow and learn chords, what things you can do with that, and indirectly start, you know, practicing chord progressions we see which is a big part of music and it's gonna help you go above the rest if you're um, like me which is uh, your specialty is like making sample beats you know if you can put some melodies and chord progressions on top of it it's gonna distinguish you even more but so before i go to the tutorial as usual please make sure to uh, support clormo so i can reach more people you can subscribe on YouTube, like on Facebook, follow on Instagram, Twitter, and every other way that you may find me. Let's go into Logic Pro X. If you want to follow along, what I have here is just a classic piano track, which is part of the Legacy Instruments in Jam Pack number one as such. So I um, have the settings here. The important one would be the key. I have in C major. And then I have two plugins. One is the core trigger. I'm just using the transposer to uh, tie up to the previous video of finding the key. So I uh, tie that up to C major as well. It's not absolutely necessary for, for this or for practicing. And then here's the core trigger. So the important parts here in the core trigger is that you have your inputs on top, your output at the bottom, whatever you press at the top, it's going to produce a chord at the bottom we just play one key so the first thing that i want you to do to practice this and use the chord trigger to learn chords and learn chord progressions would be to um go with the triads so it's inside multi-parallel chords triads it's the simplest form of chords that you can play and it it's essentially three keys that's why that's why it's called triad and it's just um in this case of c major scale it's you you press your root key which is the first key and then the other two notes are going to be uh, skipping one of the white notes and that's how they're going to look okay so that's a triad start start with that you can practice with that and um once you feel comfortable with those then you can move around into other presets see what chords uh you're playing and so on and so forth and as you do it more and more you're gonna trust me you're gonna learn at least one or two chords so it's you can play them on your keyboard uh, on your own and then get rid of the chord trigger plugging all together if you want to and now to start finalizing the video, I mentioned chord progression. So chord progressions are nothing more than what the phrase means. Is you are going from one chord to another, and it's gonna create a melody that um, you know sounds uh, good when you play those chords together. There are many chords uh, or and chord progressions out there from you know based on the key that you're playing on. But even more important, there are chords that are the most commonly used on pop music. So I think that you should uh, start with those. I'm not going to show anything here because there's so many resources out there that show you that, that just you just Google it and you, you will find it. So once you find the preferred um, source that you will use, so what I have here is just another track with the same instrument. And what I did was I drew on top of it some notes. So what I have here is just like the one one triad, uh, number four, and then number five. Why is that? Because the root key is going to be determined by the note you're playing. So it's one, then I go to four, then I go to uh, five. This one's out of place. Then I go to five. So it's four and five. That's one of the uh, very common chord progressions in C major, one, four, five, and there are many others. 
this notes here, this while notes here are just the same notes that make the primary one chord or the, the C chord. And when you just want a little tip as you when you're learning uh, chord progressions, when you go from one to four in this example, right? So for when I go from here to here, I can just play and put a little melody like a transition from one to the other by just playing the same keys that make that previous chord and then jump to the other one. You can do all sorts of things too, right? You can combine this with uh, with your other hand and play a lower note so you can you can give it like a, a bass, uh, or like a complement bass to your chord and so on and so forth. You can do many other things with that and as you uh, get more comfortable learning chord progressions when you're creating music then let's say you have something that sounds good, you can obviously export that as an Apple loop and have it there forever in your library and use it maybe later just as a sketching tool, right? And that's how you can improve your workflow uh, as well using the chord trigger, learning chord progressions and learning what keys make different chords. So as a recap, uh, chord triggers start with the triads, Take a look at what keys compose each different chord. Then when you feel comfortable with that, search for a resource to get acquainted with common chord progressions, play them around, and then just give it your own flavor on top of it, okay? And that's really all I had for this quick tip. Um, as usual, thanks for all the support to all those subscribers and Anyways, I'll see you next week. Peace out, people.